A couple other things we like as we look out there is um, the fly out. So a lot of I've seen this in a lot of uh, a lot of sites. Uh, uh, a lot of core e-commerce sites are starting to use this. Uh, definitely, travel sites are using this. Um, so when you go across a product, you can actually see little blurbs uh, about that product, and they may not be uh, the same content. It may not be the same blurb that you have on that product page because that would be uh, a duplicate copy, and you want to you want to avoid using duplicate copy whenever you you can. But uh, we like the 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 flyout. That's a good way to go to add um, uh, copy to those pages. Uh, the one thing I would add to this page, they do have a little blurb at the top of the uh, the page, and that's really just describing what London hotels is is all about. But we would probably put 200 or 300 words of of location-based content to the bottom of this page, add links to uh, attractions and other things in London to uh, make that page more relevant. Uh, looking at some, once again, the good, the bad, and the ugly, looking at some of these category pages, uh, obviously some of the big brands have that, that huge brand value that brings people to their site. Uh, this category page for Armani Exchange is a good-looking page, but when Google comes comes and crawls this page, there's not much for it to uh, look at to index this page. So it's got Armani Exchange and dresses, and that's about all the, the, the content that uh, uh, Google would be reading. So we would recommend that, you know, maybe it might be 50, 70, 100 words at the top, and maybe a 200, 300 words at the bottom. Uh, but it should have something. Another thing that we see a, a, a lot of is this empty page. So, um, uh, and this is just a bad practice when you're, uh, in, in, you know, for any reason, I mean, uh, it, for just merchandising, you only have one product or two products on a page, you know, it's best to put those products into another category or into another page and, and avoid that, that, uh, that bad paddle boarding uh, category page that sits there all by themselves. So, um, and then here's a good page that we would like to walk through. This is for Sears. And once again, they're using the more button to uh, uh, expand that that content uh, where needed at, at the top. But they don't. They want to put people into the process of. They're looking for a refrigerator. They don't want to read too much. They want to get in. They want to see the products. So we don't want to interrupt that that path to purchase. Uh, but that content is very crucial for for Google to crawl that page and index that page. So we do that. Um, uh, we we like what what they're doing there. Uh, we like the teaser descriptions. Uh, once again, the, uh, the little blurbs of content, uh, adding reviews, things like that uh, uh, for every um, for all these products is great. And then adding those 300, maybe even up to 600 words of content uh, to that page uh, with with links. If those pages are performing really well, you can leave. Uh, uh, you may not put links in. If you see those pages are were performing pretty well and they're starting to fall off a little bit. You may want to add more content, change out the content, change out the links, things like that. So you need to kind of work those pages as well. Other content tips that we see when we're out there is, once again, I, I, I did discuss this a little bit, is if you have the social credentials or the social cred, use it. So if you're a cooking.com or a pet store, once again, or any kind of enthusiast com community, sporting goods, biking products, whatever it, it might be, Use your Facebook page, uh, link link to those pages. Uh, use the like button. Have that like button uh, and that sharing uh, uh, information on your site on those products. Um, you know that's that's part of the strategy. If you're selling cement and nails, maybe not, but social is, is obviously a, a very powerful tool. Uh, add that social proof to your site if, if, if you can. So if you are selling furniture and you've been uh, in some sort of magazine, uh, you've been in Esquire recently or something like that, bring that, you know, from that other, those other channels, let's bring that information to your website, add that social proof or that so social cred to your, to, your, to your site. Also, it's very easy to, to mobilize or <laughs> to optimize for the mobile experience. Uh, and if you're doing a short description, a long description, uh, bullet points for, for uh, a product, just add in a, a quick mobile description. And then that mobile description might be similar to a short description. It might be 40, 70 words and a couple of bullet points. Uh, it makes it very easy for the user to uh, review your products and categories 
uh, on on uh, a mobile experience. Um, also, that we're seeing a lot of this at, at play with the, many of our customers is if you can touch the content once, that's all the better. So as 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 close as you can get to item setup, it's better to do add that description, add that SEO juice at the item setup stage, and then you don't have to touch it twice. So um, we're, we're seeing a lot of activity ar ar around that now. Also, one of the big things that we're going to be talking about in a future discussion will be the content standards. So being able to create content standards around the projects that you're building, uh, uh, understanding those standards uh, for every product description or product descriptions, category pages, uh, um, uh, your your knowledge center, all those all those types of uh, activities, locking your identity, brand standards, your brand voice, uh, have a good understanding of those things and document those things so that you can pass it off to your writers, uh, pass it off uh, uh, to whoever is working uh, with your brand, and um, so that they can understand you know your values what you want to communicate, how you communicate with your customers. Super important stuff. So uh, spend some time building the, your identity and, 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 and content standards. So uh, I'm going to get off my soapbox a little bit, and we're going to do another poll real quick. And then Alok, Jane is going to join us and, and, and say a few words as well. So how big is your content team? Okay, so we're going to move to a lock, and then uh, I think um, we'll give you a couple more seconds, and Amanda should be able to pop up some results. Well, uh, thanks, Greg, and, and uh, hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about a uh, 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 little bit about the creation of budget and analytics around uh, content optimization. So I think we have results of the poll, and it seems like 44% uh, are the content team size anywhere from two to six people and uh, more than 50 or large content teams are about 22 percent. So we have a pretty good distribution of audience. Yes. So thanks everyone. Uh, so <clears throat> a little bit of my background. I have raised a multi-million dollar uh, content optimization and SEO budget when I was in uh, Walmart as their head of SEO. And it can be challenging, it can be hard, uh, uh, especially when you are standing in front of the CMO the way you present content marketing or SEO, uh, uh, you really don't want to talk there about meta tag or you don't want to talk there about Theo ones. Uh, when you are in front of leadership or CMOs, they want it to hear. They want to hear ROAS. They want to hear your channel yield or channel efficiency. So those are the slangs you need to use just to uh, uh, convince them on a budget. Uh, in this specific uh, webinar, we are talking about uh, product and uh, uh, category page optimization. And uh, keep in mind, if you are an e-commerce, uh, the product pages, they are the core pages. Everything is kind of built around that. Uh, the second becomes uh, categories. And these are the conversion pages. There are other initiatives like blogs or buying guides. Those might be more awareness, but these are the main pages which really bring the dollar directly. So pay attention to these pages. Um, uh, of course, this is not a new news. Uh, content optimization or SEO that builds lasting authority. Once uh, you are there, you stay there for, for a while. Um, uh, analytics, uh, it can be complex, but now there are a lot of tools available uh, beside uh, Omniture, Google Ana Analytics. Uh, there is a, 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 a list of uh, very good companies that came up in the last few years, uh, Bright Edge, Search Metrics, uh, 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 a few of them. And uh, you can really go all the way down to uh, not only the content, uh, uh, the keyword ranking and so, but really you can go all the way to your uh, revenue and, and overall traffic. Uh, so today, uh, per uh, Content Marketing Institute or CMI, over 40% of online marketing budgets are going in content marketing. For our e-commerce, uh, usually they are more PPC heavy, but we Today we are advising uh, growing e-commerce to spend 20-30% uh, of marketing budget in content marketing and SEO. Uh, of course, take a tiered approach uh, when it is like a hundred of thousands of product descriptions or maybe millions for large e-commerce 
or thousands of category pages, take a tiered approach uh, because uh, beside the top driver, uh, top revenue driver, there is a diminishing rate of return. Um, so I'll move to a little bit of analytics. Um, what we have seen, uh, especially for the large e-commerce, product and category page optimization, it does two things. Of course, uh, it brings you more traffic from SEO and other channels. Uh, if you have a more optimized pages, it also influences quality scores, so your PPC also gets some help. Uh, but at the same time, when you bring traffic through the targeted keyword, it also convert better. So in general, we see 20 to 30 percent lift in traffic and 10 to 15, 20 percent lift in uh, conversion for large e-commerce. If you are a niche, a small player, uh, you see even better results. Uh, in ROS, the translate anywhere from 10 to 20x uh, for uh, your top driver, it can be as high as 30 or 40x ROS. So, so really, I mean, a great thing to optimize, a great thing to dedicate some uh, a marketing dollar there. Um, of course, as I said, like uh, take a tiered approach, uh, the right timing, uh, seasonality, your top revenue drivers, top margin drivers, um, uh, items which are having low SEO visibility in compared to your rest of the channels, items with poor copy, uh, those should be the first one to optimize. Um, so like uh, category pages or even product pages, anything which goes above the fold, that yields uh, three to five uh, times better uh, than below the fold, uh, but both are important. So um, in general, for category pages, we see 20 to 30 percent improvement in traffic uh, by uh, above the fold copy. Uh, below the fold will produce anywhere from five to 10 percent, and I'm talking this for large e-commerce, uh, whatever study we have done. Um, so again, uh, content optimization and SEO efforts are very measurable now. Um, there are a lot of good tools available. Uh, and they have solved this puzzle. And um, what we are seeing on constantly in aggregate, uh, they are producing, uh, or the content marketing is producing 5x higher ROS in compared to all of the paid channels. So I'll hand it over to Brad, and I'm really excited to talk here about uh, content marketing and products and category pages. Cool. So we're going to do a one quick poll uh, to finish things out. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Mayla's going to get that up. And um, uh, once again, as she's doing that, I'll kind of go. With, uh, our next uh, uh, project that we'll be talking about is the uh, Knowledge Center, or sometimes called the Buyer's Guide area. Uh, seen a lot of investment in this area with a lot of companies. A lot of your big players are doing it. Uh, you'll see many of these companies, if you do a search, have 60, 70,000 buying guides. So it's a huge investment for a lot of these big companies, and um, it drives a ton of traffic. So we'll be doing um, our next webinar uh, within the next month. Uh, maybe uh, we'll get that on the schedule for uh, January, and we'll reach out to you folks, and we'll take it from there. So the poll results are, do you allocate a portion of your marketing budget to product and category page optimization? 29% said yes, and 71% said no. 71%. So that's actually kind of a surprising number for me. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, I hope you got some value out of this uh, presentation, and we look forward to talking to you uh, in the new year, and we'll be presenting uh, uh, once again. If any of you would like to reach out to us, uh, my information's right here, uh, Brad Curtis, uh, director of Global Sales, and uh, my number is there as well as my email. So thank you very much. Happy New Year. We'll talk soon.